Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to do a sheep in graphite and I'll be using the Pit Matte Graphite Pencils for this. It's the first time I've used a product like this and it's um, meant to be a non-glare graphite. Now obviously I've used regular drawing pencils before but I was really intrigued by these pencils because I thought they would be handy for when I want to draw on film and then the lights wouldn't make it glare like my regular graphite pencils do. If you'd like a real-time version of this tutorial, you can find it up now in Critique Club and I will have a link to that in the video description. I'm starting off with the HB pencil which is the hardest and lightest lead in the set and I'm just getting a basic sketch of the shape of the head for the most part. Now the pencils range from HB all the way up to 14B but uh, and I'm going in with a 14B here just trying to get some of the darker values established and uh, I have to say that they don't feel as soft as like a as like their graphite counterparts so if I had like even a 6B graphite like regular graphite pencil it would feel about as soft as this 14b so it is kind of a weird um weird texture to get used to it seems to drag a little bit more than glide on the paper almost as if it has a little bit of a waxiness to it so i'm not exactly sure what these pencils are made of a viewer told me that um they thought it was a mixture of carbon like charcoal and uh, graphite which it could very well be it definitely doesn't seem to blend as much and has a little bit of a sticky feeling compared Compared to graphite which is extremely smooth on the paper. Of course it could also be this paper which is in the um, Viviva Inktober sketch folio. I thought this would be a nice drawing paper um, because of the subtle tooth that it has to it but um, I'm thinking it might not be as strong of a paper as I would want for the amount of blending and uh, erasing that I want to do using like the eraser as a drawing tool itself. So I'm gonna try these on different paper because I don't want to pass judgment on a product uh, too hastily if it's me. <laughs> the problem which I think it very well could be. So I'm trying to get these darker values in just so I can kind of get my full range down being the white of the paper as my lightest value and the uh, dark of say like the shadow under the neck and the um, the pupil that sort of thing being the uh, the darkest value. Now I apologize my camera did go out of focus a few times here because what happened was I was leaning in to draw and the camera focused on my head <laughs> and not on the drawing so please bear with me over these few seconds here. Uh, so that's one of the frustrating things and that's something that uh, keeps me from doing too many drawing tutorials is the fact that um, if I'm using uh, markers or I'm using color pencil or I'm using graphite I like to um, kind of look straight down on my work and then the camera will want to like it'll catch the side of my face and I'll want to focus on that versus focusing on the artwork which I guess I should go into the manual mode and just set the focus on my um, on my sketch pad but I you know I didn't think of that when I started off to do the this, um, this project here. So I really wanted to get some of the uh, the highlights like right at the edge of the muzzle you can see the light fur kind of like almost glowing so I needed to put some toning in the background so that that could stand up and um, so I'm doing that by using just kind of trying to tone the background with some pencil and then I'll be able to erase out the highlight later. One thing I struggled with here was getting a really smooth blend. Um, generally with graphite you put down the you put down some graphite and then you can go over it with a stump or your fingers and blend it out nice and smooth and I did have some issue getting a smoother blend here and this isn't a really textured paper I would say it's um it's definitely suitable for like uh watercolor and ink and um marker and whatnot so it's not really but it's not really that toothy I wouldn't say it's hot press but I would say it's kind of like soft press it's uh very subtle and I'm using the included stump here to do my blending and I wasn't getting the results I was after. It does smush the the uh, the charcoal or graphite rather around but it just doesn't give me a very smooth effect. Um, it almost picks up more graphite than it spreads around which was kind of frustrating to uh, to deal with and I did decide to just kind of blend over the whole face there because I just felt like I needed a tone surface. I really like using a tone surface when I am uh, when I'm drawing but I didn't have a white pencil here so I really wanted to stick to what was in this pencil set so that I can kind of see what it was capable of. Um, here I'm doing another layer going in an opposite direction with the edge of my pencil thinking maybe I can fill in the grain of the paper a little bit more that way. Uh, which worked to some extent but um, I still wasn't really happy with the results and I'm establishing those dark values again because um, I like to have that full value range down 
just so I don't get too timid when I'm shading. And I am putting just a few little hairs here and there, but I'm really not getting into the detail too much yet because I, I might need to smudge it out again. I don't want to waste the time putting in detail if I just have to smudge it out. Um, so yeah, I, I was, tried all the different pencils in this set. I would recommend if you're curious about this line of pencils that, um, you get either a set of three or six. I think this set of, it's eight pencils. They call it a set of 11 because they're counting like the pencil sharpener and the blending stump and the eraser as part of like the contents of the set. But honestly, I don't think there are anything to write home about. You could use whatever you had if you already had like a blending stump or your fingers. I really don't see what the big benefit of those particular products are. And um, I honestly felt like the uh, the pencils were so samey that there wasn't very much difference between the grades of graphite here. So so what I would recommend, though, is um, either the set of six, which is like half the price of the set of 11. The set of 11, which is only eight pencils, is like $23. And the set of six is um, 11 over at Blick. So I would definitely go with the set of six or one of the set of threes. But do the set of three that's got the softer pencils. Because honestly, I found that the, the, uh, the harder pencils are just kind of like... Not very useful. Um, and of course, this, this probably has a lot to do with my style, but um, that's just my opinion anyway. Uh, now here, I was using a sandpaper block to sharpen my pencil because I felt like I was just sharpening and sharpening and sharpening and wasting a lot. So, um, But then when I sharpened on the sandpaper block, I noticed a lot of the graphite dust. So I just picked that up with my finger and used that to apply into those really dark shadow areas where I just want to base down a bunch of value, a bunch of dark value, and then use my electric eraser to pull up those kind of woolly, um, clumpy woolly uh, snarls that the the uh, sheep have. So uh, that was a that's the reason I'm trying to get so much dark in there and so much toning down because I know when I use the eraser as a drawing tool, I'll want to um, I'll want to have that in the background so I can have contrast when I erase away all of that graphite. I'm also throwing in some of the crazy uh, sticky up hair in with the pencil because it will need a little bit of shading on there. It's not all super light. And plus the background's not really dark enough to provide as much contrast as I would want. So this is the the electric eraser I have. It's nothing fancy. I paid $5 for it on a super sale at Jerry's Artorama many years ago. And it came with like a, bo a box of like 50 or 100 replacement erasers, which is probably a lifetime supply for me because I don't really use it all that often, but it's really great for doing these sorts of textures on graphite drawings or charcoal or color pencil. So it's really a fun tool to have. I know Derwent makes one that's got, or makes, it's either one that takes two different sizes of erasers, or maybe they have two different ones. One's a fine tip and one's a, a thick one like this. So that would be a fun, um, you know, a fun tool to have if you find you like this technique a lot. But, um, I really like it. I like it as a drawing tool. I don't really erase with it too much, but uh, I have erased with it. I've used it like if I've uh, got an ink smudge somewhere and I've used it to take ink off of like a greeting card and stuff. So it is kind of a handy little thing. I just keep it in a, um, in a little bowl next to my table with some erasers and other little... Um, tools I use a lot and uh, and I find it's, it's handy but you gotta have it where you're gonna use it if it's packed away in a drawer you'll never use it and again that darn uh, the darn camera is coming out of focus because I'm tipping I'm, I'm leaning over my drawing to see exactly where I need to put those highlights and it's really um, it's really messing with the camera I'm so frustrated <laughs> I'm very frustrated <laughs> frustrated with the uh, with the recording aspect and also with the with the way that's coming out and I'm just using a large flat watercolor brush to brush away any crumbs from my eraser or uh, the graphite really isn't that messy. It's not like a really smudgy graphite. So if you're someone who doesn't like graphite that smudges a lot, these might be for you because they're definitely not as um, not as smudgy as like a typical graphite pencil. So I just I think it's just one of those things where it's a very particular pencil and I'm not sure if it's for me or not. I definitely... Uh, sometimes when you're when you do a project with a new supply, you're like, oh, I can't wait to use these again. That is definitely not the experience that I am having with this. But it's probably down to personality. It's just probably a, a product that doesn't match my personality very well. But I am going to give it another try with different paper because um, you know I, I don't want to be too hasty when it's uh, it could just be something that is is a combination of these two. Uh, these two products. Uh, I've been using some of the graphite to go in around the woolly dreads and kind of give some contrast, get those shadows darkened up, and I'm throwing in a few furs. I'm not going for a super realistic look here. Um, it's definitely more sketchy, mainly because I'm just, 
um, I'm having difficulty with that with the paper pilling on me. It's um, like with the erasing. It's it, whatever is in the eraser and the pencil and the paper seems to be just glop, glopping together and kind of rolling up, uh, rolling up that top layer of paper. So I knew there's going to be a limit to what I can do. And on that, I was flipping to the front page of that sketchbook because I had used washi tape to tape around a little border from that illustration. And when I peeled the washi tape up, it was peeling up the paper and it's an extremely low tack washi tape. So this is definitely not a very robust uh, sized paper. It's funny, like my ink didn't feather on that paper, but it's it will peel on you if you use tape. And I think that erase the abrasion of the eraser was giving me that same issue. So, um, and I've noticed that before with the Viviva sketchbooks, and I think it's because um, any of the the in the papers that I've used that have been made in India have a very soft size. And I think that just me might be how they make papers in India, much more softly sized paper, a much more delicate paper. Um, so I think that's just probably the way they do it there. And because um, I, I mean, I don't think the, the paper is a bad quality at all. It took the, and it, I don't know why it doesn't feather my ink, but it still peels up like that. It's very strange, but, um, and it doesn't like buckle or anything. It's just, it's weird. I think it's just how their paper making processes, wherever they have, wherever they have those paper making factories in India. But I've noticed it on other Indian made papers from other companies too. It's, um, it's a, uh, it's just a different flavor, I guess. A different flavor in the art supply buffet of life, right? Uh, and I'm just, you know, going in with some more darks. I like my darks. Uh, I think that's a, something else I was a little frustrated with. I was expecting, like, the 14B to be super duper, almost jet black. Um, and I just was almost looking for this, like, dark hole matte, deep, deep dark. And I did not get that from these pencils. So... Um, so I guess, I guess I wasn't getting the intensity payoff that I thought I would from these. So I have to say my first impressions of these pencils, I am a bit disappointed, but, um, I'm going to give them another try and, uh, the drawing's okay. It's, um, I'm still in that point where I'm thinking about how frustrated I was drawing it. So that's kind of a bummer, but, um, Anyway, I hope you liked it. I, I think it's all right. And um, if you want to see the full length tutorial, it's in Critique Club. I do apologize. There are some fuzzy out of focus bits there, but I left them in because I thought the commentary would be interesting anyway. So that's all for me today. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.